It's another delicious day here in the Let's Make Food from Food Kitchen, and today I'm making some apple butter for another fall recipe. Apple butter is great on toast, peanut butter, apple butter sandwich. It's just, mm, it's delicious. Dip some other fruit, and mm, it's just good. So there's a couple of steps here that we need to do. Wash, 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 wash really well your apples. I um, do mine in a little bit of apple cider vinegar and wash them really well. Let them soak for about 10 minutes in that water vinegar solution. Um, wash them however you feel comfortable with. We're gonna peel them, which is a step you can skip if you don't mind the little bits of peel in your apple butter. I just don't want them this time, so I'm gonna peel mine. You'll need two pounds of apples, a third cup of cane sugar, a third cup of brown sugar, one eighth teaspoon of cloves, because cloves goes a long way, teaspoon of nutmeg, teaspoon of cinnamon, teaspoon of vanilla extract, and a teaspoon of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Peel your apples, core your apples, get them in your pot. All right, let's get these apples peeled, and don't forget that you can save your peels and your cores to make apple cider vinegar. I will put a link down below on how to do that. So as you're peeling your apples, you wanna take out any bad spots that you might find, bruises, just remove those, and um, like any wormholes, anything like that. Go ahead and just take those out. I'm gonna to toss some apple peel over there. Some people like to use a mixture, like a tart apple, along with a sweet apple. These are just Fuji. I have two pounds of Fuji. You can use Golden Delicious if you'd like. Those are both soft apples that cook up a little faster. Now, if you're doing this slow cooker method, it kind of really doesn't matter how soft they are. They're gonna cook. All of my apples are peeled. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my cooktop on so that it starts warming up, and I've got it on a medium high. So I wanna get it heated up and then it'll simmer. I don't know why I got rid of my bowl. I forgot I still have cores to put in there. So I just missed this one little piece right there. I wanna cut it off. I don't want any core in my stuff, okay? So now I'm just going to take everything but the cores and the peels and put them in my pot here. Get rid of these. And I'm gonna go ahead and juice my lemon and I just need one teaspoon. Now this lemon is a little bit older. It's been in my fridge for a little bit, but it's still good and it still has juice in it. It just might not be as much. We'll see. That might be enough. All right. So I want that one teaspoon of lemon juice. Okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead and start putting in the rest of my ingredients. I'm gonna put in my sugars and my vanilla extract, cinnamon, cloves, and nutmeg. So then we're just gonna stir it up. And it's already smelling good. Doesn't take long. So once this is nice and warm, I'm gonna turn this down. Medium low, and I'm gonna simmer it until the apples are soft. Like if you stick a fork in them and the apple just falls apart, that's it just needs to be super soft. So let's get to that stage and I'll come back on. Should take half hour to an hour. It really does depend on the type of apples that you use because those firmer apples are gonna take longer and also the size batch that you're making. This is a smaller batch, so it's gonna take me less time where if you doubled it, it'll take a little bit longer. And I almost forgot, don't forget to add one fourth cup water. Now you can simmer it. All right, I've let my apple mixture cool some. Give it 10 to 15 minutes to cool off and that should be plenty. I've got some little jars here. Use whatever size is gonna work for. Are you gifting a little bit of goodies? Are you making a goodie basket? This is a great size to put in those little goodie baskets if you're giving them away, if you're feeling generous, right? Some options. Okay, so what I wanna do is put my lid on my blender and I've already checked to make sure it's plugged in this time. <laughs> Okay, and I'm gonna puree. Okay. 
So I'm gonna check that consistency. I don't want there to be any chunks, so I might go as so far as to liquefy. This is what I've got right now, and it's looking pretty good. Oh, it smells really good. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit liquefy for just a minute. And that's it, I am good with that. I'm gonna taste it, it's hot, so I'm gonna be careful and taste it. Make sure it's good. I mean, of course it's good. Make sure I don't need to adjust anything. Mm, no, that's perfect. Yeah. So one of the things about my recipe is that while there is sugar in it, there's not as much sugar as a lot of other recipes that I find out there. You can adjust your sugar content based on your taste. If you don't like it so sweet, use less. You can use a combination of sugars like I did, or you can reduce the sugars and add molasses. You could use a honey. There's variations that you can use. So what I want to do is just fill my jars and you can do a couple of things. Do you notice how the color changed? Isn't that nice? Isn't that pretty? Um, if you're freezing these, don't forget to leave about an inch of headspace so it doesn't crack your jars as they expand. And I think I've got just enough for these two jars. I got this other one out for a size example and also just in case I had a little more than would fit. There's lots of other things you can do other than like toast and sandwiches. I found some other recipes that I'm gonna start looking up. One of them I found interesting. I haven't tried it, so I'm gonna test it out and see if I like it before I make it, but it involved butternut squash and apple butter. So I'm gonna take a look at that. I'm gonna test it and if I like it, I'll make it for you, and if I don't, well, you won't see the video then. <laughs> Does that sound fair? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here so we've got a little small jar. It won't be full, but I'm not gonna waste any of this delicious goodness. So while we know apple butter here in the United States, it doesn't originate here. It comes uh, from Europe, Germany, Holland, those types of areas from the Middle Ages, and they would cook this for days, can you imagine how good that would smell? Mm. Yum, yum. There we go. My apple butter is done. I'm gonna leave the lids off for a couple minutes and let them cool. Don't forget to label them with the date. If you're just putting it in the fridge, it'll last for a couple of weeks. Now, if you're doing it in the freezer, a couple of months, and you can hot water bath them, you can can them. There's a method to pressure can this, so lots of ways to preserve and keep this around. But again, if you're doing this as gifts, go ahead and can them so that the person you're giving them to has a chance to use them, especially if you're making it ahead of time. This is such a beautiful, delicious thing to have around. Is there something you'd like to see me make? Tell me what it is down below in the comments. What is your variation on making apple butter? I was talking with my mom the other day and she reminded me that when we were young, my brother and I preferred pear butter over apple butter. Now, I don't remember this, but she said, well, you know, you were, mm. okay, so it's time. I guess I better go look up some pear butter and refresh my uh, really old memory. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks for joining me here today for another kitchen adventure. From my kitchen to yours, let's make food from food. That's one boy.